So hi, welcome to the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... And I'm Dakota. Oh. I'm Dakota from the band Another Day Dots. <laughs> we're going to ask you some questions today about their new single, uh, Look At You. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I feel like the YouTube video has a lot of love from it. Um, we, we did a lot of local scene. We did it right in the band house, actually. We actually, up until now, we all were living together. And um, we decided to do it in there, and we kind of beat the shit out of the house for the scene and we it turned out it turned out pretty nice i think it's almost at two hundred thousand views it's almost crippling too so it's pretty cool man people are people are seeming to like it. it's definitely definitely a new new kind of style for us all right Mm -hmm. i i've personally had it like on a loop at certain points after hearing it for the first time like this is very very fucking good (laughs) that's awesome man i appreciate that a lot so is there any meaning behind this single name or cover art um, I'd say nothing too deep about it. It's just pretty much a relationship. You know, it doesn't have to be between, um, you know, like um, boyfriend, girlfriend it could be parents. It could just be, I wrote it about, um, after years of being with someone, you kind of see someone changing into something that, uh, they never were before. It's almost like, I almost refer to it as like, they're changing into like, like a monster or something that's why i kind of just like the whole video we had joy just sitting there almost like she was dazed because she was there physically but mentally she wasn't there and that's kind of like you know these relationships it's almost like one person's trying and the other one's not so it's like um so that one was definitely was a deep cut for sure but the, the, for the artwork nothing too crazy we just um, we just wanted to go with something fresh and cool <laughs> okay mm-hmm uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? Uh, yeah. Or single, my bad. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. We just, we've been getting asked a lot to do albums and right now we're just doing single after single, man. You know, we're waiting yeah. to, waiting for the right stuff. And, um, but, uh, for this writing process, all of us, we just get together, we jam and, uh, you know, we let the good vibes go and they, they lay down, they lay down the music. I believe Tyler, our lead guitar player, he, came up with this song with the riff and all of us like stood there we looked at each other like this is good this is good let's try this this is definitely something for the younger crowd something for i could see people you know moshing to like at the festivals that we played and they did and it was so they laid down the, the music the tracks and then i just i uh, took it home studied it for a few weeks and came up with the lyrics all right perfect all right uh, so i want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this track and the meaning behind it Hmm. I'd say definitely in the chorus when I say, um, look at you, look at you. I don't think that I want to. It's almost like if you could, you're almost telling the person, like if they could look at themselves, they wouldn't want to look at them either. Mm -hmm. And, and like I said, I think that has a really deep meaning because sometimes people lose track and sometimes they just are in a almost like autopilot zone of just living life, but without all the fun parts of it. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so i feel like that was that definitely is my favorite part of that okay for sure wow uh so where was your headspace at while you were writing this track um you know it was definitely definitely hurt um for sure you know a little bit of sad boy vibes going on mm-hmm. but uh it was it was definitely like i said we definitely wanted to keep it moving we didn't want to keep it a slow song or something we still wanted something vibey too and that's what tyler guitar player really He's been keying on, he's been doing, messing with some loops and messing with the pedals and stuff. And we're really getting in this really whole vibe scene of just, you know, driving along in your car, smoking and jamming to us. You know, that's what, that's what this was pretty much for. And that's what uh, we seem to have a lot of fans doing. Okay. That's good. Uh, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to the single for the first time? Should they play it in the car with friends, go in the dark with some headphones on? Is it a party track? What do you personally recommend? Uh, I definitely think I'm always like a uh, a nighttime person, like mm-hmm. for when I'm in my when I'm in my feels. And once it hits like midnight, I'm almost like I don't know. I'm definitely just like really in my feels. So I'd say for the first time listening to, I'd say listen to it by yourself. You know, headphones, really get into the vibes and really get into the lyrics and hear what I'm saying. And um, like I said, everyone interprets it differently, but. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be the way that I, I wrote it, you know, and that's what I like. My lyrics are usually always pretty vague around like that. So, but like I said, headphones by yourself and 
if you guys like it enough jam it out in the car it's, we see a lot of people tag us in videos of them jamming it out in the car and that's that's pretty sick all right awesome. i did when i finally like the song finally gripped me it was like when i was alone just kind of chilling out working on other shit so i agree uh -huh. with what you said um oh, yeah, man. so this question should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe the single for new listeners in three words no more no less you got me going let me see i'll definitely say it's fresh mm -hmm. intricate okay and fun okay. keep it simple keep it simple that's good it's so intricate because the, the musicians behind it like jerome and tyler and nick on on drums everyone just goes crazy on there and mm -hmm. i'm just over there singing a simple melody and people are singing it with me and i love i love when it's like that it's like chaos in the background and then like one soul like melody carrying and that's that's pretty much what we are wrapped up <laughs> oh, sure oh, my god uh, so is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this single to invoke in your listeners um maybe not sure just just a maybe not a feeling but i think you know, it definitely just has a new feeling for when the verses come into it. And then I want that when that first chorus hits almost like you lose breath. And that's pretty much what we emphasize in the studio because we wanted Nick's snare to hit it. And it's almost like silence. And then this big ass chorus come out of nowhere. It's almost like we want you to be off guard with it. And we want you just to just wake up. And if you're not, you're not happy in the situation, either try fixing it or just do be happy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so what band or artist influence you thinking here on this track, uh, if any? Definitely, it's going to sound crazy because most of our stuff is grunge. Like we like, or I like Nirvana and that kind of stuff. And um, this track, we like I said, we all wanted something different. We wanted something fresh. And um, definitely for me and the lyrics, this is definitely for me the highest I've ever been vocal range. So it was definitely cool to see it, to see it play out like that. But I would say... It'd be like 30 seconds of Mars vibes for sure. And then I just, I just wanted like the Taken Back Sunday vibes mm -hmm. also. Like I want kids and people screaming the lyrics with me. Even if I'm not even singing, I might want everyone singing and screaming along with me at the top of their lungs. That's, yeah. that's what I love about Taken Back Sunday. Like that, that kind of vibe, that's what I want. Yeah, that's always like the best feeling in like a song when it's like, oh, uh -huh. I can hear this like live. I yep. can. Oh, you see God. everyone's everyone's sweating in the rain, screaming it. Yep. <laughs> that's what we, that's what we wanted. All right. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Uh, so, what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this single? Um, I would say definitely going up to the uh, new studio. Um, we went up to uh, Syracuse and we wrote. Uh, not wrote we recorded with steve and um it was the first time and he was really well he just got done recording with ice nine kills which is pretty oh, sick God damn. and um so yeah he he hooked us up really well in the apartment and it was it was nice it was flowing well we all got along everything and we were in and out of there a lot quicker than we uh thought we would be we we laid out about a week week and a half and we got finished in i think three four days maybe five what? days max and it was sick we got it that's, all everyone everyone, was, everyone knew their parts pretty well that's <laughs> ridiculous that's impressive wow it was a lot of fun uh, just that whole experience itself was fun you know just walking around eating with the guys like at new mm -hmm. restaurants and stuff it's it's fun oh yeah that's awesome uh so picture us you're on tour you're at a gas station for a rest stop what is your snack of choice Ooh, that happens a lot um definitely chips I'm a chipaholic, mm -hmm. man. I need chips. Like, so I'd say like definitely ruffles. I like the ruffles. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. That's good. Do you have a, <laughs> a flavor of ruffle chip? Yeah, it'd be like the cheddar, the cheddar cheese, probably. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. How, how do you feel about the all dressed ruffles? The what? All dressed <laughs> Are ruffles? they the puffy the puffy ones? No, no, no. They're like the, the Canadian ones that sometimes make their way across the border. <laughs> no i'll try them I'll try okay them. yeah Wait, if you, like, if you find flavor? them uh they're like they're like sweet and tangy because there's like I, if I, I gotta find i'll send it to you later i i <laughs> okay. they're, they're very fucking good though okay okay it's got me intrigued now yeah gotta... if you find exactly. them you gotta eat them very curious yeah. all right uh so where do you see the band in the next five years um in the next five years i see us mm -hmm. becoming more of a household name i'm yeah. hoping you know we get we definitely want more songs on the radio but then we also like deep tracks too you know like we want 
we're one of those bands. If we had an album with 12 songs, maybe five or six songs would be radio hits. And then the rest would be deep tracks and just mm-hmm. mysterious tracks. And, you know, that's because that's what we love to do. We love being weird. We love being out of place kind of. So, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and we definitely would be torn, torn a lot. We're starting to pick up torn now, which is good. We're going out um, with star set for a little bit in November. So mm-hmm. that's going to be, that's going to be a lot of fun, but I definitely see us torn. It's like a 60% chance I'll see you guys in Philly. Oh, really? TLA? Starset. Yes. Nice, man. Uh, you so guys got it. For the last couple of questions, we're going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Man. Well, recently I've been trying to, usually before tour, I try eating good. You know, I try even cutting out certain meats and try just eating salads, but that lasts for a few hours. So. <laughs> Less until the next meal time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say maybe definitely like a nice surf and turf. All right. mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely a steak. And I probably I want it cooked by Gordon Ramsay. So Ooh. I wouldn't want that. How are you washing right. it down? <laughs> uh just water with lemon. Okay. Ooh. That would taste. <laughs> Uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Honestly. I thought it'd be pretty cool. I'm going to say SpongeBob. Ooh. Yeah. I think Classic. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being, under, if, being able to be underwater like that would be sick alone, but to have friends underwater would be cool. Too. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I have thought of asking the last question and every single person we've spoken to has said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Purple. Specific, Specific shade? shade? Royal purple. All right. Taste. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, you know, we're definitely going to be coming out with a lot of new stuff, even new material, new singles coming out. And we got a lot of good news coming. Um, okay. so just stay tuned to our instagram our facebook we're always posting on those constantly and even tiktok sometimes but um like i said we're gonna be hitting the road with star set starting in november and we're gonna be hitting some local places like sherman theater and tla and stuff like that so and um for tour dates just hit our website another day dawns.com all right uh, well thank you for sound that's been dakota from another day dawns and we have been the good noise podcast